Have you seen it? Oh, right. <laughs> but like, we just had Hey, good evening. How's everybody doing? Good. All right, y'all stand up with us tonight. We got some things different. We can't get in the office. We can't have words up here. So hopefully, uh, we're just gonna have a good time of worshiping tonight. So I don't know what you've been like. It's a Friday night. It's kind of a cool thing to come out here and uh, worship at the on this Friday after a long week. But uh, for those that don't know me, my name's Kevin, and I'm part of Able Ministries with my wife Brandy. And honestly, we have not sang together in like six years, to be honest with you. She used to sing me all the time, and then my daughters took over. And that's just the way. She's like, I'll step out of the way. But they're both gone in college, so it's just us tonight. And uh, at the last minute, we couldn't get anybody in the band, so we're just going to have some fun tonight. So I hope you guys are ready. Let's pray together, and let's just get ready to worship God. God, I love you so much. I thank you for who you are. And it doesn't matter if we have screens or if we have a band. God, we just want you. And so I pray tonight, Father, for your presence to be in this place. God, if we just come together and we just sing some songs or we just hear a message, God, and nothing changes in us, it just doesn't matter. And so, God, we want you here in this place. We want you with us, Holy Spirit. So would you move as only you can? May we, may we leave this place different than the way we came in. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Sing if you can and just uh, let God talk to you if not. The splendor of the King And clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice and He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide It trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice How great how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and oh, see how great, and how great is our God. The name above all names, you are worthy. You're the 
loves you so much. He didn't love you when you were good. <laughs> the Bible says, while we were still sinners, God, he sent his son to die for us. So let's just sing that to him tonight. He loves us. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us.
that is. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah. 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 Shake hands with somebody and sit down.
I heard somebody say, Go dogs. And said, I'm delusional up here. Yeah, we don't lie to the Lord. That was Pat. What's up, Pat? What's up, Pat? <laughs> awesome, awesome. I'm gonna say a quick prayer and then we're gonna take off. I respect you guys' time tonight. Father God, we just thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for just being able to come together in the name of your son Jesus. Just pray right now. I come against every distraction. I bind up every assignment of the enemy to keep the word from going forth just bind it up now loose your anointing right now to flow in this place giving us ears to hear eyes to see and a heart to understand what you're saying and see what you're doing we thank you in advance that your word will go forth and will not return void i thank you for hearing your word with clarity and i thank you for being able to speak your word with accuracy and boldness Lord, we love you tonight i just speak a blessing over everyone here every family and over all those that are watching on facebook and then also the ones that didn't make it tonight we just we thank you lord we're grateful we love you we honor you in jesus name amen yeah. All right. We're going to talk about victory over grief and sorrow. We talked a bit about it last week. Um, this week, we're going to talk about reigning in the peace of God. Yeah. Reigning in the peace of God. Now, in Romans, by the way, if you feel if the Lord puts on your heart to give something tonight, we have these nice bags. Um, the the door was locked back there, so we weren't able to get to the tide buckets. But um, I wouldn't mind if we filled those up. Honestly, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that'll work, right? Amen. Yeah, we love to be a blessing. The uh, City Gate Church is very generous to let us use this building every week, and uh, we like to bless them and also anybody else that comes out to serve. We like to try to be a blessing to them as well. Um, I also have a missionary in Africa. Some of you guys might know Condi, Condi Moses. Um, but he's an awesome man of God, and I'd like to send him a little something too. He's doing big things over there in Africa. Kind of similar to what we do here. So we got some money going to missions and stuff like that. Thank you, guys. Um, so... Last night, my wife and I actually, as I'm turning to Romans 5, we went to, and y'all ever been to Carabas before? Oh, yeah. Restaurant Carabas? Once or twice. So we don't go there often, but it is a monumental place in our life. We actually went on our first date there 10 years ago. So we went to celebrate our 10 year First date anniversary. Yes, we're, we're nerdy like that, right? I even wore the same shirt that I had on. So, um, yeah, so it was, it was great. We had a good time and we got to encourage the waitress and it was, uh, had a good time. My food was amazing. I loved it. It was real good. It was fine. Romans 5, 17. For if by the one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more, say much more. Much more. Much more. Those who receive an abundance of grace in the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Christ Jesus. So 
we've been talking about that in the forever free group a lot that's like the golden text for that and as i was opening up i just you know the bible says that righteousness peace and joy are in the kingdom of god righteousness peace and joy so i believe yes we reign through righteousness but peace is there too amen peace is in there too we're going to talk about that tonight because I'm going, to, I'm going to share something with you that really changed my life something a revelation that i got and in matthew 16 jesus told us how he was going to build his church he said i'm going to build my church on the revelation of who i am and he says when i do he says the gates won't prevail the gates of hell will not prevail against it so jesus is the word we know that right so holy spirit it's part of his job is to illuminate the word so he'll reveal things in the word to us that will get us in a place where we can reign over situations that maybe held us down in seasons past and uh so we're going to get into that a little bit tonight let's turn over to second peter i wasn't going to share that part um second peter chapter one Now, oftentimes when I read Peter, I think about, because his letters are very bold and very provoking. Now, but I think about the Peter before, before the cross. And he couldn't say anything right. He couldn't do anything right. right. He was always putting his foot in his mouth. But you see him here, and really in the book of Acts, when he got baptized in the Holy Spirit, he got saved. Jesus in John 20, Jesus breathed on him. He received the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit came on. He got baptized in the Spirit, and he preached, and a couple thousand people got saved. Right? right? So it was awesome. And, um, man, just just to see the difference in before Christ and after Christ is just awesome. So here we go. Second Peter chapter 1. I'm going to start with verse 1. Simon Peter, a bondservant, an apostle of Jesus Christ to those who obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ so oftentimes in here and I see a few new faces but oftentimes it's somewhat of a family chat and uh, for all those that have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior you're of like precious faith amen you're of like precious faith <coughs> And for all of you guys, maybe if there's anyone here that's never received Jesus Christ and you haven't received that faith of God yet, we, we hope that that happens this evening. Amen? Amen. Um, grace and peace be multiplied to you. It's talking to you guys, to me. In the knowledge of God and of our Lord, Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things, say all, all, that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which you have been given, say have been given, have been given. to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So, just for the sake of time, I've got a lot of verses, so I'm going to just hit a couple without us having to turn there. But if you're taking notes, you can jot it down. Ephesians 1.3 says something similar. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Say, has blessed us. Has with blessed. every, say every, every. spiritual blessing spiritual in the blessing. heavenly places in Christ. Places in Christ. So, we see here that we've already... See, the kingdom is, everything in the kingdom is past tense. Right? When Jesus, was, when Jesus was on the face of the earth, he was actually fulfilling the law, but he wasn't preaching the law. He was preaching the kingdom. So when Jesus was preaching the kingdom and the gospel, he was actually talking about something that was to come. It hadn't even come yet. But when you look in, over in these letters, for example, when you read about healing, it says, by his stripes we were healed. And you read verses like this, it says we've already received everything that pertains 
to life and godliness. And then you read in Ephesians where we've already received every spiritual blessing, right? In other words, we have access to it, right? Obviously, we're not, I don't think anybody in here is walking in every single spiritual blessing yet, but it is available. Amen. And we receive it and walk in it by faith. Amen. Amen. So this is through the knowledge of him. So, you know, it talks about the knowledge of the Father and of Jesus. Well, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So part of this hinges off of getting to know Jesus or getting to know the Word. That's why we're so encouraging to you guys about getting in the Word of God. Getting to know the Word of God for yourself. And, you know, that's one of the things we do at the men's house is we have quiet time every night where we're reading the Bible. You know, and if you're not, I encourage you guys, get in the Bible, read the Bible. And it doesn't just have to be a quiet time, time during the day. I mean, find that time because a lot of the promises of God are going to hinge off of our relationship with him. You know, the Bible says, and you shall know the truth and the truth will bring freedom in your life. It will actually says it will make you free. You know, and so there's one thing about knowledge of the truth, but it's something else to actually intimately know the truth. Amen. And that happens as we spend time and then we can begin to step into some of these precious promises that it's talking about right here. That's my um, text for tonight. Just a quick intro. Um, one of the things I talked about last week was no matter what comes against us on the earth, Jesus will never leave or forsake us. Amen. Amen. He's our very present help. In our time of need. So no matter what, we, what we're going through, the Bible says that he always makes a way of escape. Right. And we can actually find it in his word. And the Bible calls the word actually the sword of the spirit. as part of our spiritual armor in Ephesians 6. So there's a word for every single situation that we go through. But that's why it's so important that we have knowledge of this word. So we can go to those promises when we're, when we're in need. Amen? Amen. We had some stuff happen recently. And man, I think... We're going to talk about peace tonight. That peace is there. You know, we just have to make that choice to really to, to tap into that peace and, and, and access it and receive it by faith. Amen. 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 One of the things we talked about uh, last week was, you know, God's only in our lives. God's only going to be in control over what we give him control over. He's not going to force us to think a certain kind of way. Now, he will encourage us to meditate on things above in his word, but it's a choice. He's not going to force us to speak life. It's a choice. We get to choose. Now, if we give him control, he, I mean, he'll, he'll, he will take control, but we've got to give him control. We've got to yield it to him. Uh, the third thing that we talked about was choices. You know, it says, I said before you today, life and death, blessings and curses. He says, I encourage you to choose life so that you and your descendants may live. So once again, you know, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a correct teaching to sit there and just think that God is going to control everything about our life. He wants to. He wants to be in control of our lives. But at the end of the day, we have to make that decision to guard our minds. We have to make that decision to guard the words that come out of our mouth. And we have to make that decision to walk in the spirit every day. Amen. And that's some of the things that we talked about last week and some of the challenges that I feel like the Lord challenges, challenges us with last week. Um, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, because we were talking about guarding our minds, especially in tough seasons. And we were talking about griefs and sorrows and I, we can turn to Isaiah 53 4 and 5 now once again I want to make it clear because I don't want anybody to misunderstand me there are tough seasons where we will weep or cry and that's perfectly normal you know that's that's there's nothing wrong with that it doesn't mean you're weak it doesn't mean something's wrong with you but there is a spirit of grief and sorrow that will try to come on you that will try to keep you in a rut. It'll try to get you in anxiety. It'll try to get you in depression. And it'll try to get you stuck and to stay there. And that's not okay. Amen. Amen. All right. How do we know that? Well, in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, it says, speaking about Jesus, and this was talking about leading up to the cross and the cross. It says, surely 
talking about Jesus, he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. So to me, this indicates and suggests that griefs and sorrows could potentially be very damaging if Jesus himself, part of the Godhead, had to bear these for us. Amen? We talked about last week the importance of casting our cares on the Lord because he cares for us. You know, there's a lot of those things that, like I said, you know, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. So we don't want to try to carry all that stuff for an extended period of time. We weren't designed to carry those things for long periods of time. Amen? Amen. We want to cast those cares on the Lord. Um, we don't want to submit to that. Like we don't want to, when I say submit, I mean the Bible says submit to God and resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So there's forces that come from the enemy that we don't want to submit to. We want to submit to the things of God. Amen? Amen. And it says when we do, it says the enemy will flee. So those are some of the things that we talked about last week, just kind of a foundation. Um, we talked about walking in purity. You know, the Bible says in uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, it says, because Jesus loved righteousness and he hated lawlessness, it says the Father anointed him with an anointing of joy or gladness greater than his companions. So when we walk in a place of purity, God will anoint us with a joy that we can't even explain. A supernatural joy. Amen? Amen? When we walk in purity. Once again, you know, we we don't hate sinners, but we do hate sin. Jesus hated sin. He hated lawlessness, but he loved righteousness, right? Amen. But he loved he loved those that, you know, the sinners, because it says he for God so loved the world that he gave his son. Amen. Now, tonight we're going to talk about reigning in peace. Specifically, the peace of God. So John 14, 27. John 14, 27. So we're doing a, uh, a class on Tuesday night at my home, and we're going through this curriculum called Forever Free, and it's great. Um, because we don't want to just walk in part of the freedom that Christ paid for. We want to walk in free because it says, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. And one of the things that we're doing is we're going through the Gospels. And there's 89 chapters in the Gospels. All right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So in 12 weeks, you can read, if you read a chapter a day, you can read the entire four Gospels. And that's what we've been encouraging everybody to do, to read a chapter a day. Um... So, what, what I want to challenge you guys to do, and we've already talked about this before, um, a lot of the, like I said, leading up all the way up to John chapter 20, uh, anybody that you saw in the, in the Word of God hadn't been born again yet because Jesus hadn't gone to the cross yet. And I know that sometimes that surprises people because you're reading it and you're just automatically thinking these people are saved. A lot of the people that he ministered to were Jewish. But... He did preach the kingdom, right? So there's a lot of good stuff in there for the believer. Um, but my challenge was this, to see yourself, because Jesus says if we believe in him in John 14, 12, he says we won't only do what he did, but we'll do even greater. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 6, the apostle John said that if we abide in him, talking about Jesus, then we'll walk just as he walked. So my challenge is to... Instead of relating to a lot of those people that weren't saved, that didn't have the Holy Spirit, that didn't have anything that we have right now, to see yourself as Jesus. See yourself as when he laid hands on the sick, because he said we would walk as he walked. To see yourself in his shoes. To see yourself casting out devils. To see yourself healing the sick. To see yourself setting the captives free. Opening the blind eyes, because he said we would do all those things. Right? Instead of seeing yourself as the woman with the issue of blood, for example, you know, just trying to touch Jesus' garment. Right? Think about it for a minute. Jesus, as the Holy Spirit, is Jesus the Father and the Holy Spirit are one, right? 
1 John 5, 7. But Holy Spirit, when Jesus ascended and he's at the right hand of the Father, he sent the Holy Spirit to dwell inside of us. So the one that they were trying to touch to get healed, he now lives on the inside of us. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of us and will give life to our mortal bodies. So we have that life. The life of Christ is living on the inside of us. That's why when we do, you know, he's instructed us to lay hands on the sick. It's part of the Great Commission. And he says that we will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The reason why is not because there's something special about us. It's what we it's who we carry. It's his life flowing through us. So that was just my challenge was to see yourself walking as Jesus walked and doing the things that he did because he said we would. Amen. Right? He said we would. So John 14, 7, 27, I'm sorry. Everybody there? Sure. All right. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. John is a great book. There's a lot of talk about the Holy Spirit in the book of John. Um, I feel like John is kind of geared more towards Christians. But I like all the Gospels, you know. Um, some people say start in John, but I say start in Matthew. And just get all of it. It's all good. But here we go. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Now, keep in mind when Jesus ministered, I said this earlier, he was a lot of, including right here, he was speaking prophetically. Like they couldn't have the peace of God. He was talking about once he leave. You, can, you couldn't have the peace of God until you had peace with God. That's Romans chapter five, verse one. And the only way you could have peace with God was by putting your faith in Jesus Christ. In the moment that you put your faith, once Jesus died and he rose, because that's the way we get saved, right? Believe with our heart in the Lord Jesus, confess with our mouth that God has raised him from the dead, and we shall be saved. So once we did that, he gave us his peace. This peace he's talking about, he was speaking prophetically of a time that he would die and resurrect. And he says, in that day when you put your faith in me, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. You're going to get changed on the inside and you're going to receive my peace. Amen. Amen. When you got saved, the peace of God became part of your DNA. It's also, not only is it fruit of the Holy Spirit, it's fruit of your spirit. How do we know that? Well, in John 15, Jesus said that He's the vine and we're the branches. What does the fruit grow on? The branches, right? So it could, we're the branches. So it's, peace is also the fruit of our spirit, but apart from the vine, we wouldn't be able to produce that fruit. So it's necessary, right? It's not saying, you know, we could do that without Jesus. No, without Jesus, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have it. it. We have to have Jesus. He is the source of that peace. Amen? Guys, I'm trying to, show you some things that really opened up my mind and, and, and has helped me over the years. Um, a lot of guy, a lot of you guys have heard my testimony. I did 15 years in federal prison and just really got linked up with some great men of God and, and, and just started really getting into the word and spending time in prayer. And some of these truths that I'm sharing with you right now, man, have brought me through some of the wildest seasons you could ever think of. Imagine some of you guys have, and some of you guys, Christopher can definitely relate, have done as much time as I did or more. But just tapping into that peace, man, and learning that that peace is, is in you, it, it's a world changer. Now, I'm going to give you all just a couple more verses for reference, and then, um, and then we'll keep moving. 1 Corinthians 2.16, another one of those verses that's past tense. It says, we already have the mind of Christ. Amen. Amen. We have the mind of Christ. All right? 
2 Timothy 1 7. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Not only do you have the mind, not only do you have the peace of God inside of you, but you've been given the mind of Christ and you have a sound mind. Amen. Come on, guys. I need y'all to lock into this. It changes things. Notice that in John 14, 27, Jesus says, my peace I give to you. Think about it for a minute. Think about the peace that Jesus walked in when he was on the earth. That's the peace that he's given to us. Y'all remember when he was asleep on the boat? And the disciples were freaking out. Hey, they weren't born again, guys. Let's give them a little, let's give them a little uh, credit there. They were not born again. Now, they did have delegated authority and delegated power, but they didn't have what we have. They didn't have the Holy Spirit living on the inside. They weren't born again. But they did have Jesus with them. But Jesus did say, it's going to be better when I go because right now I'm with you, but when I go, I'll be in you. Game changer, right? So I don't like to be too hard on them. They weren't saved, you know. Jesus was in the boat, but it must have been a pretty serious storm because these guys were fishermen. For them to panic like that, and Jesus was down there. He had he had one of those, uh, what's that guy's name with my pillow? What's his name? Mike they had one of Mike Lindell's my pillow down there. You know, I'm sure he was supporting him. He's a Christian man, you know. He was on his my pillow, you know, probably snoring in tongues or something, you know. And uh you know, they went down there, they were freaking out, woke him up, and he rebuked them, man. Jesus, I mean, there was times when, and really, honestly, for the most part, a lot of times it was when people got out of faith. And be like, you, oh, ye of little faith. I've been with you this whole time. Like, why are y'all tripping? And then what did he do? What did he say? Peace be still. Peace be still. See, we can release what we carry. Amen? Amen? We can release into a storm or in a situation what we carry. If we have that revelation that the peace of God dwells within us, then we can release that into a situation. It's available. Right? And we're called to walk as he walked. And part of that is releasing peace in the storms in our life. That's good news, isn't it? Man. There was another situation, and I'm not going to really get off into it too much. In Luke chapter 4, when Jesus stepped on the scene, the Spirit of, a God, Spirit of God came upon him, anointed him. He preached his like, sermon announcing that he was coming on the scene from Isaiah. He preached from Isaiah 61. I mean, it was a mic-dropping sermon, and they wanted to throw him off a cliff instantly. <laughs> he didn't get offended. He didn't get mad. He didn't lash out. The Bible just says he just walked through the crowd. Amen. Peace. <laughs> Peace. Just think what we would have done if someone, you know, we got up here and we, we did our best worship. What if we would have... Brad Mark and his, his uh, Kevin and his wife and taking them outside of that beautiful worship performance. They would have been like, what? What are y'all doing? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. They probably would have gave y'all the hope. But anyway, imagine doing your best, it was just a beautiful sermon or whatever, and then they wanted to take you out. I mean, to handle it like he did, he really, and we're called to handle it that way, and I believe they would handle it that way too. But um, I'm just trying to give y'all some a visual you know, how Jesus responded, that's how we're supposed to respond. You know, and honestly, guys, as we begin to grow and continue to grow, we should expect some persecution. Right? Because the Bible says, in this world, you will have tribulation or pressure. And that pressure comes for the word's sake. But he says, be a good cheer. 
Amen. Because I've overcome the world. So it's good to be prepared for those seasons and just, you know, the Bible says he who sits in the heavens laughs and we're seated in heavenly places in Christ. So just a little encouragement to you and myself. Um, but he stayed in love. He didn't get offended. He stayed in peace and he was able to walk right through the crowd and continue his race. Amen. Amen. Peace of God. So later on in John 14, 27, we just read it. It says, he's given us this peace. And then it says, let not your heart be troubled nor let it be afraid. Notice that let not is telling us that we have a responsibility here to let not. All right. Let not. That's God's not. He's not going to do that for us. We have to do that. He meets us in that place. When we step out with, in faith, he meets us there with his grace and he gives us the ability to do it. Amen? Amen. When we walk in peace, it becomes like a wall that these things can't penetrate through and get to us. Philippians 2 says that the peace of God will mount a guard on our hearts and our minds. We talked about this last week and we talk about this often. The Bible says we're to cast down every thought that comes against our peace. Amen. Amen. That's our responsibility. Every thought. We have thousands of thoughts a day, right? And I know it seems like a full-time job and it sort of is. But once you start practicing peace, it's almost like riding a bike. You kind of get used to it. You know, you're like, get out of here. Get out of here. Flying them little swat them little swat them little flies and getting them away. Walking in the spirit, when we talk about walking in the spirit, it's the same as walking in our born again spirit. I'm not going to get into the um, talk about the three-part man, spirit, soul, and body. We are a spirit. We have a soul. That's our mind, will, and emotions, and we live in a physical body. But we're called to <clears throat> let our spirit man or woman dominate over our thought life, life, over our emotions, over our flesh. And whatever we feed the most, brothers and sisters, is what's going to dominate. If we're feeding the spirit... Spending time in the Word, spending time in prayer, spending time in fellowship, then our spirit man will dominate. But if I'm constantly, if all I'm doing in my free time is like binging out on Netflix series and, you know, stuff like that, then spirit man is probably going to lay dormant and other things are going to rule and reign. And there's nothing wrong with watching clean TV as long as you're majoring in the majors and that's getting that time in the word and stuff like that. Notice I say clean TV, Amen. right? We don't want to, you know, we don't want to, we're called to guard our gateways. You know, the things that we watch, the things that we listen to, the things that come out of our mouth. Right? That's a gateway into our heart. And if we're single out, it says we'll be flooded with light. So we want to we want to have our main focus on him. And we do want to set boundaries on things that we watch. All right. I used to. When the Lord really started dealing with my heart. We had a movie theater in the, the last prison that I was at. And we would get excited about some of the old movies that we used to watch back in the day. And they put it in and like. Just a few minutes in, there'd be like three or four cuss words, and I'd be like, oh, I gotta go. Amen. Didn't even remember it though. <clears throat> you know, but and, and I'm sure some people thought, look at this dude, like, who does he think he is? Holier than thou, like. But seriously, <clears throat> setting those boundaries. Amen. You know, even, oh, I used to love this, and then you put it on, and it, it's not what you thought it was. Turn it off. Don't. Be a good steward over your heart. Amen. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but it's important. 
Galatians 5, 22 through 25. Is this all right? Yeah. Galatians 5, 22 through 25. I heard Todd White say this one time, and I love it. He says, Jesus sits on the theater room of your soul. Let me say that again. Jesus sits on the theater room of your soul. Meaning that, yeah, my church buddies aren't sitting here watching this with me. But guess who is? Jesus is right there. Amen. Would I take Jesus into this movie? Would I take Jesus into this place? You know, um, I'm trying to take y'all to the, this is like next level stuff, guys. Like if y'all want to go to the next level, all right, we talked about it earlier. If you walk in purity, he'll give you an anointing greater than your companions and you'll do exploits that will just kill the kingdom of darkness. And we were created to do that, right? First John 3, 8 says, for this purpose was the son of God manifested to destroy the works of the devil. So we were created to destroy the works of the devil. So there's some fulfillment inside of that. Amen? Amen? And he's coming back for a bride without spot or blemish. He's calling us to walk in, in, in purity in these last days, guys. And I believe y'all are. I'm just cheering y'all on. Amen? Amen? Galatians 5. Start with verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Are you Christ? Yes. Amen. And we've crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit, and let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. So, this is the big piece here. Pay attention. I said it earlier. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat it. Repetition is the mother of memory. All right? Jesus said if you make the tree good, you make the fruit good. I'm telling you tonight, the Bible says in the book of 1 Peter, that we have been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed through the word of God. There was a spiritual law that was established in the book of Genesis that every seed produces after its kind. So the real you, which is your spirit, because when we die, our spirit is says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Well, we know that our body is. I mean, when you go to a viewing, that, that body that's laying there, that person is not there any longer. They're in one of two places. If they've received Jesus Christ, they're with Him. If they haven't, they're not in a good place. They're not in a good place. So, anyway. The real you, your spirit man or woman, has been born again. In the Greek, that actually means to be born from above of incorruptible seed through the word of God. So you have the nature of the Holy Spirit on the inside. Amen. Because you were born of the word of God. So yes, it's talking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, obviously, right? But it's also talking about the fruit of your spirit. So I'm not trying to jump through all these different hoops to get peace. It's a state of existence. It's who I am. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness, temperance, goodness, kindness, self-control. Now, there's a difference between fruit and righteousness. 
Righteousness, you either are or you aren't. Obviously, both of them are received through our faith in Jesus Christ. Right? All of our boasting is in the Lord. We're saved by grace and faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Right? But you're either righteous or you're not. It's not based upon works. Now, fruit grows. Fruit grows. Right? So how does fruit grow? Fruit grows when I employ it in situations. I have, for example, I'm getting bombarded on every side with anxiety. Maybe I've struggled with that in the past, and I'm just hypothetically speaking. And instead of choosing anxiety, I choose to release this peace that's been released on the inside of me. Whether it's through worship, reading my word, or I just choose peace. And it might be tough in the beginning because, honestly, we're not used to doing that. Coming out of some of our old lives. So we have to grow in it. But when I release that peace, it's, it's like working out. What happens when you work out? You get stronger. It's the same thing with fruit. Fruit grows. Now, not only is that fruit for you to partake of, it's for others to come up and pick. As a leader, people should be able to pick fruit, fruit from your tree. Now, it also grows as we spend time with the vine, connected to the vine. Connected to the vine, intimacy. Intimacy equals fruit. Right? Yeah. But, and we don't, and I've said this before, we don't want to force feed people our fruit. We want to let people pick our fruit. Because we can try to, oh, get this, get this, get this, and thump people over the head with the Bible. Now, hey, it's great. If, they, if they've given you an ear and you're pouring into their life, then they'll receive from you. But sometimes coming out of some of our old lifestyles, people want to see it. They want to see us walk it out for a minute before we start hitting them over the head with the Bible. Like, give it a little time. Let them see you walk it out. And then they'll, once they see you walk it out for a little while, then they'll start, you know, calling you up. How you doing? They'll listen to you for a while. And then when they see the consistency, then you can start pouring into them. Right? Does that make sense? Romans 8 and 6. You there? Say amen. Amen. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Carnally minded is when we put our mind on the natural realm. All right? It could be stuff going on against our life, like we said, coming against our peace. It could be something coming against our finances. It could be a physical thing that's coming against our body. In our mind, to be carnally minded is, I've got my mind on that thing that's coming against my life. And instead of shifting my focus to the spirit, where all the solutions are, I keep my mind on the natural realm, and it says to be carnally minded is what? It's death. To be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. Remember, we've already been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. We read that in 2 Peter. We opened up with that. So we've got to turn our mind to that. And when we set our mind to be spiritually minded, it means to set our attention on the things of the Spirit. We'll have life and peace. So we need to put our focus on what's in us, not what's around us. Amen? 
What we focus on makes the difference between death and life and peace. Let me say that again. According to this verse, what we focus on will determine whether we walk in death or life and peace. Amen? Yeah. What are we going to focus on? Life. Amen. Spiritually minded, right? Isaiah 26 and 3 says, if we keep our mind on him, Jesus, the word, then he'll give us what? Perfect peace. In the Hebrew, it says shalom, shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. But the key there, like I said earlier, we have to choose to put our mind, keep our mind on him. Because if I'm thinking on carnal things, it equals death. But if I put my mind on spiritual things, it equals what? Life and peace. Say, so choose life. Mm. I want to say this because I think it's important and Kevin and I were talking about this earlier this week um, when we see random tragedies in our life that are stealing, killing and destroying that should be a dead giveaway John 10.10 10, I like to call it the balance of the Bible it says the thief comes to Steal, to kill, and destroy, but I come to give you life and life more abundant. Amen. Now, he doesn't orchestrate, God doesn't orchestrate the tragedies, but he does orchestrate the way of escape. The life and life more abundant. Not going to go there for the sake of time, but next time you read John chapter 10, it's talking about actually two different voices it's talking about the voice of jesus the good shepherd and the voice of the thief and we have to choose which voice we're going to follow <coughs> amen? amen when you start dealing with the natural arena or the carnal arena it's ruled by the enemy that's why we have to choose to stay in the spiritual arena. God has given us, it says to every man, he's given the measure of faith. So he's given us, God has given us the measure of his faith. So it says we literally have mountain moving faith, but it's not in our head. It's in our heart. It's a heart faith. And if I try to battle the enemy in the mental arena, I'm going to lose every time perfect example you see people that end up in mental hospitals it's because they try to fight a mental war but if we stay in the spiritual realm man we can keep the enemy under our feet and, and, and keep him defeated the whole time amen? amen when we and we're getting close. When we um, dealing with those situations, we don't have to beg and plea and ask God for peace. We just have to employ the peace that's already inside of us. You can, but he's already given it to you. He's going to say, son, I've already given it to you. Daughter, I've already given it to you. did Jesus say, my peace I give to you? Not as the world gives. See, the peace that the world gives is based on my circumstances. But the peace that he gives, it's a state of existence. See how he stayed during the storm? That's the peace he gave us. Amen. He wants us to sleep in the storm too. Is this helping y'all? Yeah. Is it making sense? Yes, it's very simple, isn't it? The gospel is simple. It really is. It's, it's very simple. It's not complicated. Sometimes I think we try to complicate it, but 
He's already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. It's inside of us. He's already given us his peace. We just have to step into it, activate it. Amen. Walk in it. Inside of the mental arena, there's panic and questions. In the spiritual arena, there's peace and answers. Amen? The Holy Spirit, actually one of his names is our counselor. He's got all the answers. He has it all. And he lives inside of us. Amen? Can you come up, Kevin? <laughs> Remember, we have to choose to remain in God's peace. That's his arena. Keeping our undivided attention on Jesus because he's the author and finisher of our faith. I remember... And if you're taking notes in um, Matthew 14, let's stand up. Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 32. Love this story. Peter, talked about Peter earlier. This is Peter before the cross when he was a hot mess. He saw Jesus walking on water and he said, can I do that? And Jesus said, I bid you to come. He gave him a word. Peter started walking on water, guys. Think about that. He started walking on water. He started doing the miraculous. He wasn't even saved yet. <laughs> I love that. But here's what happened. As long as he had his eyes on Jesus, the word, he continued to walk in the miraculous. You could say a supernatural peace. He was walking in it. But as soon as he got his gaze off of the word, and the supernatural peace, because Jesus is our peace, amen? amen? And he started focusing on, it says the wind and the waves start picking up. The wind represents things we can feel, emotional things. The waves represents things we can see. So we're talking about things in the natural here. When he got his eyes off the things of the spirit and started focusing on the natural, he sank. And guys, I think we've all been there. I think we've all been there. But here's the good news. Jesus didn't push him back out in the water. Jesus didn't try to drown him. He didn't thump him on the head. He reached down. And he pulled him back up. And as y'all know, we don't have to go into all the story, but later on he restored Peter. And Peter went on to be a mighty man of God. Amen. The Bible says he was actually crucified of side down because he didn't feel like he was worthy to be crucified the way that Jesus was. Oh, That's what tradition teaches. So he went out hard. But what I want to do tonight, first I want to do, first I want to throw the invitation out there. I always like to. If there's anybody here tonight that has never asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, we want to give you an opportunity to come up tonight and we want to pray with you. you never done that. you never prayed never asked Jesus to be Lord of your life. Guys, I was 27 years old. Last time going to prison. And I had never really, I incorporated Jesus in my life. praying with her? 
しばらくもう買うことは。<笑>
and it would come up and it would we would taste and see that the Lord is good and that it would be so good that when we leave this place that we'll be agents of peace we'll be ambassadors of peace and we'll go out and people will be able to pick the, the peace off of our tree people will be able to pick the peace off of our tree now one more thing we're going to go out you know um, in the memory of Tyler he always went out with a fast song and the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people and we're going to go out with a praise song tonight you know that praise confuses the enemy and sometimes when we maybe we're not feeling it the Bible talks about a sacrifice of praise so I believe even tonight as we close out, maybe you, maybe some of the things I talked about, you're still encountering it in this moment. But as we begin to praise God on the way out, the light is going to literally push back the darkness. Amen. 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 Yes, I'll put him out there. <laughs> yes, thank me fast. Let's just pray together. Let's just sing together. <laughs> Shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great.
you are, you are our Father of endless blessings, Lord. And I know that you'll do anything we ask, Lord. You say that if we abide in you and you abide in us, that we can ask anything in your name, Father God. You say that anything we ask, Lord, your Father will bless us with, Lord. So we just ask that we just continue, that you just continue to work in our lives, Father God. Because it's only what you've done, Father God. It's nothing that we've done, Lord. We know that if it was what we done, Lord, we would still be dead in our ways, Father God. But you reached into the darkness, Father, and you pulled us out of the darkness into the light, Lord, when we didn't even deserve it, Father. Yeah. So I just thank you, Lord, for just being a Father so much love, Father God, when we did not deserve it, Lord. And I just thank you and I praise your holy name, Lord. And I just invite you in, Lord, be the Lord of my life, Lord. I raise my footsteps. Tell me where to go and I'll go, Father God. I just thank you and I praise your holy name, Lord, for sending your son Jesus to die for our sins, Father God. When we didn't deserve it, Father. I just thank you and I praise your holy name, Lord. And I pray all of these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. See y'all next time. Love y'all.